Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he thought he was the right clown, wasn't he? Yeah, he thought it was well funny. <laughs> yeah, we won't be laughing now, will he? I took, you know what I did? I took a two-ton bag of gravel and I shoved it right out. Hang on, mate. I've got to go. Sorry. Catch you later. Bye. Bye. Oh. Well, hi. It's Concept Soup here, where we talk about PC tech. We don't talk about doing various things to various people. We don't talk about beating people up. We don't talk about damaging their property. We talk about gaming PCs, and that's... Going to be no exception today. It's going to be our first video looking at the 12400F CPU. Haven't actually been able to put a build up with this on the channel, so it's been pretty good. We're going to see the CPU cooler, the stock LGA 1700 cooler. We're going to see how that gets on. And overall, a beautiful, beautiful build, which will serve nicely as a build guide if you want to make something similar. It's the standard fare that you expect from Concept Soup. So, what we're going to do is going to hit that parts list straight away. So, CPU, Intel i5-12400F, 6-core, 12-thread CPU. Nice part of this, from what I've seen, it's looking to be about the same as a 5600X, but it is significantly cheaper. And it comes with a pretty nice cooler. So this is going to be an interesting one um, to look at because people always say the stock AMD cooler is pretty good. Actually, I pretty think it's pretty crap. Um, it's okay. It does the job for like the Ryzen 3s and whatever. But I've used a stock cooler on the 5600X and you are really pushing it with that. Um, especially if you're really maxing it out in a tough to play game. So we're going to see how the um, the stock LGA 1700 cooler gets on. Looks pretty fancy. Um, you know, it looks a bit nicer than the old one. They've actually put some effort into it. Motherboard-wise, we're going with uh, a B660 motherboard now. Part of the problem with the new Intel stuff, actually it's the same whenever Intel brings the chips out, is that the motherboards are very expensive. So even for your basic like B660s, you're paying more than you would for a nice B550 on AMD. So... Whilst you save money on the CPU, you're going to be spending money on the motherboard. So actually, the cost becomes a bit of a wash, um, all told. But that said, we're going with a Gigabyte B660M DS3HAX. So basically, it's sort of one of those entry to mid-level motherboards, which is absolutely plenty for a six-core CPU like this, especially a locked one. And it's got AX, which means it's got the Wi-Fi 6 built in, which is going to serve us very nicely. Memory-wise, we have uh, 16 gigabytes, so that's two lots of eight. DDR4 3600 CL18. This is Patriot Viper RGB. First time using this RAM as well. We're going to see how we get on with this. I'm sure it's just going to be standard RGB RAM because RAM is pretty, pretty boring. Storage-wise, we have one terabyte of storage. It's a Kingston A2000 NVMe M2 SSD. So it's not going to have the blazing fast speeds that you get from your posh Samsungs. But then again, it's a lot cheaper. And the reason I went for this one, which only has you know around two 2,000 megabytes per second reads over something that might be a bit faster, is that this one has DRAM on board, which does help when you're starting to fill up the SSD, when you're using up all the buffers, having that DRAM there is really good for keeping the performance nice and snappy. So that's why I like the A2000 when it's a good price. The video card we have today is the Gigabyte Gaming OC RTX 3060 Ti, 8 gigabyte. The Gigabyte Gaming OC range is pretty much just like a safe bet. It's always gonna perform really well. The coolers are always nice on them. So if you just wanna go, I want a video card that's gonna just be decent performance but not too expensive, that's why I go for the Gigabyte Gaming OCs. For the case, we have the Fantex P400A. We've used this a few times on the channel before. Really nice design. You've got your three front RGB fans and there's really nice fine mesh on the front that's gonna allow plenty of airflow onto your components. We have also added an extra fan to the back. Uh, these are the Fantex SK120s. It comes with the three on the front, but we've added one to the back to complete the RGB look. The power supply we have is a 750 watt gold model. This is uh, the Antec Neo Eco. Got these on a really good deal. I've been looking to sort of clear the inventory on these, but they're actually really nice units. They're semi-modular. Um, they come with, I think, this, the parts that aren't modular is the 24 pin for the motherboard and the two eight pins for the CPU if you need them. The others, you can plug them in um, as needed. Uh, Wi-Fi is built in on this one, so no need to buy any extra adapters or anything like that. So I think that brings our parts list to an end. So what we're going to have is a quick message from our sponsor. We're going to get straight into a build montage after that. And then we're going to do some gaming tests to see what's going to be going on with this beauty. All right, bye-bye now.
This video is brought to you in partnership with JCPCCustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? Well, we've got three methods. We have the ready to go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss free experience. Experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number. And any other accoutrements that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more. Okay, back in the hot seat and ready to talk. Here we go. Very, very nice. I like the P400A. I think it's just a classic case. It's one of those no-brainer cases that it's going to work for most hardware. Nicely designed. Overall, I think it's a great case. Good airflow. Nice mid-tower size without being too big. And it looks cracking. You got really nice features on this, and I think this one turned out really nicely. I think the Intel stock cooler actually looks really cool. Um, the quality has definitely stepped up since their old style stock cooler. Um, the cooling performance is better, as we will see later, but also it just it's nice just to have a stock cooler that doesn't look awful. Like the AMD stock cooler actually looks okay, and that does help. Um, that ugly ass freaking uh, old style Intel stock cooler was horrendous, so I'm glad to see they've upgraded it. It's a little bit too spiky for my liking. I would like to have seen a cleaner design. Maybe instead of a blue ring on it, have a white ring because it would fit with uh, more styles of computer. But these are all nitpicking things. And to be honest, I'm just glad they've actually made an effort to make it a bit better. RGB all looks very nice. All tied together very nicely. All working with the RGB software on board. So happy with all of that. Let's see how this thing performs. So the first test we're going to have is Heaven Benchmark, which is quite a nice sort of standard GPU benchmark uh, just to make sure that everything's running as expected. And it is. So our average FPS on the Extreme preset, 177 with a score of 4470. This is pretty much bang on what you'd expect from this caliber of system. Shadow of the Tomb Raider next using the built-in benchmark on the highest quality settings. Average FPS, 163. Again, 
exactly in line with what I'd expect from this machine. Fortnite now, so we're talk talking about some real actual online gaming now. So in Fortnite, our average FPS was 275. I actually suspect you probably get it a bit higher depending on where you are on the map, but you're easily over that 240 FPS mark. So you're going to have a happy, happy days if you've got a, a super fast 240 hertz monitor. It's a really good machine for that, this one. Moving on now, Apex Legends, um, another very popular BR title. Um, and we're getting about 255 FPS average on this, which I'd be very, very happy with. Again, on a 240 hertz display, you're going to be having happy days. This is going to be absolutely brilliant. And I suspect even if you were to put this up to 1440p, this is obviously tested at 1080p, but if you were to put it up to 1440p, you'd probably get very similar results in these games that we've tested because Fortnite, Apex Legends, they're not particularly taxing on your hardware. So they actually tend to be CPU bound a lot of the time if you're playing on those competitive settings. Now let's talk about temperatures. So our Prime 95. So for those of you who haven't seen us on the channel here before, we do two temperatures with Prime 95 and we run it at the same time as the video card tests for maximum heat generation. So Prime 95, we run it for 30 minutes. It's a completely unrealistic load. So the, the max temperature you see is, you're probably not ever gonna see it in any application that you use unless you do a lot of heavy rendering. We would take the max temperature and then we take what I call the equilibrium temperature, which is not very scientific, but because Prime 95 does spike the temperature up for a few seconds and then comes back down, we go for where it settles to as the equilibrium temperature. As um, it, Usually the equilibrium temperature tends to be just a little bit above what you'd expect when you're using it in-game. So for Prime 95, we had 90 degrees as our maximum and 65 degrees as the equilibrium temperature. And I tell you now, that is much better than the old stock cooler. So the old stock cooler, I'd be expecting to see this go over 97, 98 degrees fairly frequently on the max temperature. So I'm impressed that it actually has improved the thermal performance. Now, for the video card, I had no qualms about how this was going to go, but you always have to do the testing for completeness. So we're using OCCT, the 3D setting, over 30 minutes, the maximum temperature was 65 degrees. That keeps it well below any kind of thermal throttling, and in fact, enough room for a bit of overclocking if that's something that you wanted to do. Um, the 3060 Ti chip isn't particularly hard to cool, so even you know this triple fan cooler here, is way more than you need. Even the, dub, the dual fan coolers is absolutely plenty for the 3060 Ti. So it's nice to see you've got that extra bit of headroom. So that concludes the testing. That concludes the build. What did you think about all of this? That's what I'm so interested to see. You can use this as a build guide or you can tell me what I've done wrong. Would you have chosen something else? You know, custom PCs are custom. So if there's something in here that you think you want differently, yeah, let us know. Let's have a discussion. Pop it down in the comments. And whilst you're there, give us a subscribe, give us a like, and do all the YouTube stuff to help grow the channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Arriba Deutsche. Bye-bye now.